According to a new study, these are the happiest Asian countries in the entire world. But why are they so happy? Yeah, we are talking about Singapore and we are talking about Taiwan. But here's the funny thing, Andrew. They rank number one and number two in Asia, but number 25 and 27th in the world. So that sort of asks the question, why are even the happiest Asians not really that happy? Ah, do Asians have trouble being happy? Or maybe it's the expectations. Anyways, guys, we're going to talk about it. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Smala Sauce is out for pre-orders. You hear it here first. I didn't even blast it out yet. Andrew, is it kind of like the NBA or like, you know, where the best players from Asia, they're, they're in there, but they're still not that good in the NBA. Right, right. Like his happiness become like basketball. All right, let's go. What are the rankings? All right, so if we look at the happiest countries in the world, it goes Finland, Denmark, Iceland, Israel, the Netherlands, Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, Luxembourg, and New Zealand. If we go to the least happiest countries in the world, it's South Sudan, Central African Republic, Afghanistan, Tanzania, Rwanda, Yemen, Malawi, Syria, Botswana, Haiti. That means everybody else, Andrew, falls somewhere in the middle. Now, here's the interesting thing. The things that they pull for happiness are GDP per capita, social mm -hmm. support, healthy life expectancy, freedom to make life choices, generosity, and perceptions of corruption and dystopia. Ooh, okay. So, I mean, right off the bat, when we talk about the Asian countries, Taiwan and Singapore, they're not known to be corrupt. Right, right. And there is, I would say Taiwan is more, I guess, free than Singapore. Singapore, you can't get fined and arrested for doing a number of things. However, I would also argue that Singapore is a lot more Western than Taiwan, where Sing in Singapore, English is the national language. Right. And I do think Singapore kind of tries to wield the the best things from the West and the best things from the East. You know, that's kind of like how I would say that's kind of seems like their philosophy in that country. Right, right, right. In Asia, by the way, it goes Singapore, Taiwan, Japan, Malaysia, South Korea, Thailand, Mongolia, China, Vietnam, Philippines, Nepal, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Laos, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Myanmar, Bangladesh, India, all the way down at 126 globally near the bottom of Asia, Andrew, and then Afghanistan. Af you know, obviously they considered Afghanistan an Asian right, country for this right. poll. Um, I'll tell you this. I think a lot of it, there is like real things you can draw from that make you unhappy. But once you get on the top end, it's more about like perception, even maybe versus like, are you on an upward arc or a downward arc? By all means, Andrew, Japan, a great place. Some people there are a little pessimistic for the future, right. but still really, really low crime rates, really clean, really technologically right. advanced, but people don't have as much hope as in Singapore. Right. I mean, I would say to be honest and I guess it's not surprising in a way, but the Philippines being number five, I would say that's pretty high up in Asia. Yes. You know, considering that Philippines on the government end can get a little messy, right? There's a lot of controversy there. Um, but some of the HDI metrics, human development index numbers, metrics might not be as good, but it's their mindset. Right. I mean, Filipinos, I get the stereotype is that they're more happy. They're more jolly. Well, I guess this, I guess a lot of people were saying that Latin cultures, they may be happier, even though certain index metrics may not be as high. They still find a way to be happy, whether it's through family, through religion, through, uh, interpersonal sociality and ping. So you're saying potentially that kind of. Latino country trait of being happy is partially affecting the Philippines. Yeah, because that's, the that's Philippines why the Philippines is... rank relative to Asia, but Andrew, altogether, Asia ranks way below its GDP numbers. Right. Whereas, obviously, Scandinavia was the happiest, though. Scandinavia, right, right. Scandinavians apparently are super happy. But you know, actually, I believe that the the suicide rate in Scandinavia and in Japan, South Korea, all these Asian countries are actually still pretty high. But I guess that doesn't- But I don't think it's that high in Singapore and Taiwan. Right, but that's not the determining factor either. Yeah, anyways. I think a lot of it has to do with the beachiness at that point. Potentially, uh, was that vitamin D? Vitamin B, different no, the, androgens inside of the body that are uh, impacted by climate. The amount of fruit that they eat. I mean, there's a lot of fruit in Singapore and Taiwan. Right, right, right. And of course, by the way, guys, I think the internet rebelled against these studies. Of course, unhappy Singapore Reddit, unhappy Taiwan Reddit. They listed all these reasons. But let's be honest. Though, and I'm not even saying that people who are negative are wrong, but they're not looking at all the arguments on both sides. Anyway, let's just get into the comment section. Some people was like, man, who knows who's happy these days, man? But what, what if you just have your happiness driven by superficiality? So Singapore is by far the richest country in Southeast Asia. What if they're just driven by the fact that they're richer than everybody and that makes them feel good? Yeah, I do think it's a clean and safe country too, though. But yeah, but if that's what makes them feel good, 
literally, literally these things are, they're poles. Yeah. So it's like, everybody has different things that make them happy. I will say this, Taiwan and Singapore, very safe places. Also, generally friendly people, kind of happy. Island culture, like you said, a lot of fruit, a lot of sunshine. Somebody said, is Asia just a sad place in general? Why is the GDP of some of the countries, even per capita, so high, but everybody, even the number one country, only ranks 25 in the world? I don't think Asia is the happiest place for the people because my theory is that Asians have such high expectations for things. Right. So then even the happiest place in Asia isn't going to be the happiest place in the world. Yeah, a lot of people were saying, you know, it has to do with Confucianism and the complexity of these ancient dynastic imperial structures because someone was like yeah man even learning the chinese language you got to learn like ten thousand characters yeah. and you have to write each character so many times does not make your life fun it's eh, not eh. happy and let's be honest the whole concept of even happy i'm not saying that chinese haven't had a word like that for centuries but i would say <laughs> the general idea of happiness is more of a western idea like what it means to be happy. You mean radiating in this yeah. like Jane Fonda, like who I don't even know yeah. who the guy I think is. Like, ah, uh, <laughs> like Mentos commercial. I think Asians can be really like content and like calm and at peace, but I don't know if the happiness is ever gonna reach that level. Confucius, you pulled a number on us. Um People were talking about, of course, all the problems in Taiwan right now. Obviously, there's a threat of war, maybe lower wages. There's a lot of political uh, jostling right now between two or multiple ruling parties in Taiwan. Other people said, Singapore, it costs so much money. It's so expensive. And everybody feels like they're so kiasu and like, oh, my kid got into a better elementary school than my other kid. How can my kid compete in this society? <laughs> Capitalistic. Um, but I think ultimately, people would take those problems over more visceral, like lower on Maslow's hierarchy of needs problems, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody got problems. I think entertainment is part of it to make you happy too. I think Philippines, they, for example, consume a lot of entertainment. So I think that helps. Yeah, that's a good point. Hoop outside too. I would say Singapore, some people are saying Singapore's numbers are only so high because it's such a self-selective population that wants to be an authoritarian government. Mm -hmm. So if you only let those people be there, of course, they're happy because they were already pre-selected. It's not they were just like born into it. Are they saying that the Singaporeans who were unhappy will just move out of Singapore? Possibly that makes sense. I always said this about New York City. If you truly hate New York City, you'll leave. It's easier to leave and go to L.A. and move there. Because Get in where you fit in, right? The lower cost of rent in L.A., the weather is better. Um, it, you can drive a car. But I'm saying in New York... You have to love it to stay here or it has to be meaningful to you somehow because if you really hate it, you'll just leave. Right, right, right. It's uh, it's such a, not, I don't want to say an acquired taste, but it's not for everybody for sure. Other people are talking about why is India ranked so low, 125th in the world. It's got all these, uh, you know, obviously it got a good space program. It's got the software capital of the world. Bollywood is a major economic force in that region. Why is India ranked so low? So I did some research into this. I just asked my Indian friend, this is what he told me. He told me that at the top end, there is a lot of great stuff happening, but in terms of the distribution of resources, it's not going to the middle or the lower end. Mm. So it's like, if you're a high end person, or you might be the recipient of those things, you know? Mm. So it's all, I think I think that's the main thing too. A happiness, when you poll a lot of people, it's like, how well is the resources distributed throughout the different tiers of your society? That's a good point. Uh, somebody said, Americans are always complaining. It's hard to believe that they're number 15. Why do Americans complain so much about their society and how it's always falling apart, but they're still pretty high? And then someone said, yeah, but th that's because complaining to Americans gives them dopamine, which makes them happy. Also, complaining on the internet... That's not actually real life, man. A lot of people complain, oh, America's declining, society is crumbling, and then they'll go off and take their kids to a soccer game, and then they watch their kid right. and, score a goal, and they're like, yeah, and, this is great. And then they go to a bar and like watch like on 100 sports screens, 100 different sports leagues that are all centered in America. Dude, the internet is way more negative than real life is. I'm not saying real life doesn't have its negatives, and we need to focus on those, and we need to get those things better, but the internet is like going to be two to three times as negative. Somebody said, who even defines what happiness is? I could believe that these countries, Singapore and Taiwan, are the relatively most happiest in Asia, but what does it mean even in regards to a total spectrum of happiness? Mm. I think that these are all good questions. Um, to be honest, 
Asia has just been about productivity, in my opinion. It ain't about being happy. And that's just a pro and a con no. of that whole region for probably thousands let, of years, to be honest, if we look at it from a westernized scale. Let me say this. I think Asia is all about being safe and productive. Safe and productive. A lot of Asian countries are safe, for the most part. Most of them, right? And uh, I think that that's what a lot of them want to try to focus that's on. That's why They're I always safe. tell my daughter and my son, they're so unhappy. They're so unhappy. I tell you, you're safe. You are, why don't I take you to the next country next door? It's not even safe. We can eat at Hakka stall whenever we want. Voila. Anyways, shout out to Singapore and Taiwan. Both very pleasant places to visit. I've been to both multiple times. Here's the truth, man. Real metrics, they matter, but there's also the perception, and it just depends on how you weight them. Let us know what you think of this study in the comments section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Be happy.